Welcome to the office. Welcome to the office, Neil. Thank you for having me. How can I help you? Um, well, I've been having bad calf pain for like the past three years. Okay. It's been taking away my... I'm blood. sorry, let's rewind a little bit. Where are you yeah. coming from? I'm coming from Stockton, California. Stockton. So a few hour drive? Yeah, five hours. All right, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. And you got dad with you over here? Yep. All right. Uh, tell me what brings you here. So I've been having a bad, like, not just calf, like lower leg pain, like on the sides. My feet hurt when I'm walking for too long. Okay. And like just little things going on in my body. Like How long, this is the main thing that brought you here. Thing, though, just the calf. right calf or the left both. or both? started when? I'd say about three years ago. Um, what happened? What do you do? I don't, I don't really remember what, what was causing it, but I just feel like it was the wear and tear Okay. from the uh, just boxing my whole life. Okay. So you're a boxer? Yeah. And then All right. I, when I was feeling in the beginning, we were like training through it. You, know, you started boxing at what age? Eight years old. Eight years old. I started fighting at eight, but I was boxing a little bit. Fighting at eight. What does that mean, Dad? That means he started. He grew up. He grew up in the in the boxing family, but he started competing at eight years old. He has about seventy amateur fights. Very nice. All right. What's his record? I'm not. I'm not. I don't remember the record, but he's he's been it's everywhere. It's he's about busy. Since like thirty seven wins, like thirteen losses. Okay, not bad. How many how many knockouts? No knockouts yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Well, we got to get you dialed in there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. So three years ago, something happened. Three years ago, yeah. I just. Like just trying to get my regular like workouts in, and then I start my my calves burning up during the workout. During the workout, yeah. Okay. And prior to that, the week, two weeks, the month before, and you were fighting. Um, my last fight, I was good. You yeah, got knocked I, out? Nah, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah, knockouts is right in the amateurs. All right. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so my last fight I was good, but just eventually like training in the gym, I don't really remember what happened. Okay. But um, So you feel it right now? Yeah, even when I'm sitting down. It's burning, it's tight, it's pain, like a it's little, sharp. Like, yeah. Sharp, all of it? Sharp. Sometimes it's sharp, sometimes it feels like just like, just like little like weird like motions going on. It's, it's hard for me to explain. Like waves going through it? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. On both sides? On both sides, yeah. More on the right or a little, the left? A little bit more on the right. Okay. How about in the feet? In the feet, both both feet, like after like, because now I train. I help train and like after an hour of walking around, helping like coaching people, my feet start to cramp up. Hour? Yeah. Standing on your feet for an hour, you start to feel the cramp. My feet, like even when you're taking the X-rays, yeah, my feet, like just standing still, like that starts hurting my feet. Like when I'm in the shower, my feet start hurting. Okay, and what have you been doing for this? Um, we did a bunch of things. I was going to uh, for my feet. I was searching up YouTube videos, just trying to like, you know, see what can help, like rolling them on like golf balls and stuff, and doing things like that. Okay. Have like you seen anyone, like, any any healthcare practitioners, doctors, chiros? We PT? did in the beginning, and then they were telling us I had like stress fractures. Okay. I had stress fractures, and then uh, once those healed though, but the pain was still there. So you did have stress fractures? Yeah. Three years ago? Yeah. Okay. And did they tell you the tibia or the fibula? I'm not too sure. Okay. All right. Um, on the inside? Yeah, I'm they're saying like right here. Okay, this is different. So this is the femur bone here, uh -huh. and then this is the tibia bone here. This is the fibula bone on the on the outside. Yeah, it was on the inside. It was on the inside. Okay, yeah. below the knee. Yeah. Got it. Okay. What I may do is um, tomorrow. You're here for a few days. I may just uh, do some snaps of the tibias just to make sure. Okay. okay. We're not messing with that part today anyway. Okay. Okay, and I don't think we need to regardless. Okay, so you had you did have previous bilateral stress fractures. They heal up in about three months regardless, whether you sprain an ankle, strain a muscle, fracture a bone, nature's healing principle it takes 90 days or three months to heal. Okay, so that's fine. But I'm sure the imbalance was there. You've been compensating ever since. 
Yeah. He yeah. walks funny sometimes because of it. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that, Dad. No worries. Uh, did you see anyone else? Um, I was I was doing a lot of stretches. I had this guy, uh, a good friend, and he was helping. We were doing workouts every day, trying to like open up my hamstrings and just find try to find like what was causing it, what was causing the calf pain, like doing calf workouts. Okay. Seeing how that affected it. How about the back, pelvis, sacrum, chiropractor? Um, no. No, right? So why now? Because uh, we came across your YouTube videos. Okay. And then uh, we seen we seen some of the magic you were doing, so we were like, <laughs> went into it a little bit more. Magic is an illusion, all right? <laughs> There's no illusion here. We're going to go through the details. Okay, all right, fair enough. So calves, feet, how's the back, how's the hips? My hips, actually, like when I'm doing like squats and stuff, mm -hmm. I feel a little tightness on my hips. Both sides? Yeah. Tell them about that pain you started getting on your lower. Uh, oh yeah, like tailbone. right, right here. Where? Inside. Tailbone. Like, yeah, right there. I started getting pains. Okay. Like just doing anything, like lifting, whatever. How about sitting? Sitting. Like right now, you're sitting. Are you feeling it on the tailbone? No. Got it. Okay. Um, shoulders, arms. It's, it's more like uh, this hurts more when like I'm flexing or something. Flexing forward. Yeah, just okay. like flexing like. My legs are like just doing something that like actively contracting. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. What else? Um, my shoulder, this shoulder. You know, like when I'm like doing like whatever lift or whatever, I can't go too deep because it starts hurting like doing dips or something. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you guys came down from there. You're 19, right? Yeah. You're 19 years old. You got a lot of stuff, little little stuff going on. So. Basically, stuff is out of balance. Yeah. But it's bad enough. You're not. You're not. Competing. I'm not able to train. Yeah. You're not able to train or compete. All right. So let's figure out what we can do in a few days. Let's do it. Um, I'm sure there's going to be follow up, but we need to start somewhere. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, along the way, you have questions. Ask. If you're uncomfortable with anything I'm doing, just tell me to stop. All right. Okay. Good. And no fighting. <laughs> I'm going to go over your x-rays first I'm going to explain in detail what I see. I already see a few things going on here that we need to work on related to your calves and the rest of your body. Sure. Okay, let's come over here. Let's work on the x Let's go over the x-rays. This is you. This is a picture in time, Leo. Tells us how you've evolved from birth. We have 24 bones in the spine that move, 23 discs in between. This is your right side. This is your left side. In the work that I do, everything is based on having a level base and foundation. Whatever is going on in the rest of the building, again, if we don't have a level base and foundation, other stuff doesn't really hold. Okay? This is your side profile. We're going to be going back and forth between the two. This is your side profile. In the side profile, we're looking at a few things. Number one, we're looking at curvature. Do we have the right curves? Number two, we're looking at posture. Number three, we're looking at the discs. Now, on a x-ray, we can infer what the disc is doing or looks like based on the shape. The discs are designed to be level and parallel throughout the spine, okay? The curve comes from the shape of the bones and the, and the postural muscles. Now, we'll go over that in a lot more detail. First thing let's do is let's look at your posture. And if we run the posture line from the bottom, we run it all the way up. What's the first thing that we see here? This line goes to the center of L5. It should run through the base of the neck, C7 and C2. And what this shows us is we're slightly, the upper body is slightly behind the foundation. So these muscles got to work a little overtime just to kind of hold them up and play just a little bit. And that's more posture. And we'll talk about where that's coming from. Okay. I'm going to move the line over now and I want to talk about his curve. You have a textbook neck curve. That is a textbook, beautiful cervical curve. Okay. I like that. When we look at your low back, let's go to the low back. You have decent curve. I would like to see a tiny bit more, but we have a decent curve there. So, but we can see five, four, three. At number two, number two looks a little bit off, more off to me than the rest of them. 
The question is, is it related to anything going on in the body or is it just a compensation? And we'll dive deeper into that. One of the things you may have seen me talk a lot about are tailbone injuries, right? And the sacrum. And <clears throat> I do find a lot, I would say in the last five years especially, 80 to 90 percent of my cases start on the tailbone. Mm -hmm. Because again, if the basement ain't right, we have no business working on the first floor. Now, when we're talking about calf and the calf muscles, when we're looking at the nerves that control that, they come from the sacrum. They come specifically from the sacral nerves, the nerves that come out of here, okay? Now, first thing we can see is you do have the bent coccyx. When we're looking at the tailbone, the tailbone should be a smooth curve going like this. You can see a lot of these bumps. He's had a lot of good falls, okay? Whether it's from fighting or just life in general. Um, but he's maintained very well. This coccyx, however, we can see this is bent forward. We have an open wedge in the back here. We're probably going to need to deal with that, whether it's today or at some point. That's that tailbone in the very bottom that you feel. Okay? I also see one, two, three, four. I see also an S5. So we have an S5 coccyx issue. We may have something at S3. Um, S1 looks okay. When we go up and we're looking at the discs here, L5 disc is good. I do want you to notice something though. We don't really see those. You see how this is like a straight line going through the end plates here? That's straight, that's straight. Even though the disc is tilted, the bone is tilted, but the line is straight. When we look here, we can see a little bit of a circle in there. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, on both of them, tiny little bit. And what that is, is because there's some curvature on this x-ray, there's a little bit of kink in his lumbar curve. And so when we're looking through the, the lateral film, we're seeing a little bit through the undersurface of the bone there. It doesn't mean that the disc is bad at all, it just means there's, there's uh, alignment issue. Okay, and we'll go over this also, like I said, in more detail. I wanna go to your foundation. So far, did that make sense what I was explaining? We definitely have the tailbone going on. This is his foundation. Do we have a level base and foundation? No, we don't. What do we have? We have a rotated sacrum on the right that's dropped on the left. We have a rotated pelvis and we have a short leg on the left side. Now, both pelvis are listed, okay? Both iliums are listed or ilium. And the way the pelvis works, they work in opposite. One goes up, the other goes down, one goes in, the other goes out. They kind of work like this. Now, let's explain what this is. PI4EX2. The exact opposite is AS4IN2. I'm going to talk about the right side because the sacrum is rotated on that same side and we know the right side of the calf is the major issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's put it together. The right SI joint. The right pelvis goes up and it turns in. The sacrum on that right side goes back, but the sacrum goes down too. And then the whole thing goes down eight millimeters. You have an eight millimeter shorter leg or, or lower leg on the left side. This needs to be under seven for all these adjustments to hold. The good news is, based on the numbers and the Gonstead analysis, Fixing the pelvis should be able to raise it up two millimeters to six. The other two is coming from there, and there'll be a little bit of an imbalance, which is his normal, okay? I'm sure the sacrum, whatever happened, tailbone stuff, that contributed to what's going on. Would a stress fracture or weakened bones cause that? If, he, if the bones haven't fully developed, he still has growth plates there, I think I am going to take some extra x-rays. Okay, I'm going to look at his growth plates and make sure the growth plates are good. Okay, I've had cases of, of kids or patients younger than him where the growth plates hadn't, you know, they haven't fully developed. And because of the injury, the growth plate was actually out of alignment. So the bone was going to form off. Wow. And with this one kid, I remember 11 year old, we were able to fix it. So it helped him quite a bit. We'll probably x-ray his ankles and his legs. Okay? Just letting you know. So, rotated sacrum. Sacrum on the right. Pelvis. 
short leg. Sacral plexus, we said the nerves coming out of the sacrum control the power in the, in the calf. The short leg on the left is causing what? It's causing this slight curve to that left side, okay? And then what does it do? It wants to come back to neutral. And so now here it comes back to neutral, but then what happens over here? There's another hard kink to the right. T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. T6 starts to kink to from right to left. Again, it wants to come back to neutral. Then what does it do again? The whole thing goes to that left side. Okay? You see what I'm showing you? Okay. Now, what I want to talk about is his upper cervical because I see something off there. We've got a deviated septum. You want me to work on your nose too? It works. Everything. All right. So when we're looking at the upper cervical, what do we see? We're looking through the, this here. This is the upper cervical mechanism. The atlas doesn't have the disc. It has two capsules, lateral masses joining the condyles here. And what we can see here, this is, sorry, this is the bottom of C2 here. This is C1. This is the joint space I'm looking at where my two fingers are. I can see a good space in here on the right side. I don't see a lot of space here. Okay, that's the second thing we need to look at. We have a deviated septum left on the left side. Now when we look at the jaw, the jaw actually is misaligned on the left and compensating quite a bit on the right. And why do I say that? It's doing this. When the jaw opens, it's going this way. According to the x-ray, we'll examine you. It goes down this way. And then the right TMJ has to compensate out like this. So it looks wider on the x-ray. Okay? So we have TMJ. We have upper cervical. We have something T6. And that T6 is also going to relate to his digestion. Now, when we look at the digestion, what do we see here? We can see there's a lot of undigested food going through his colon here. His meganblasi is good. I'm happy with that. That's the gastric air bubble. I'm not giving him anything from digestion. He's young enough. We just got to get the power on. This is all undigested food in the ascending colon, transverse. Even in the descending, there's a lot of undigested. You can see it all the way down in through here. So his digestive system is not doing what, it, like, it's not working, it's not functioning optimally. So even if you're eating clean and healthy, you're not absorbing those nutrients the best way you can. So you should tell me within one or two adjustments what's different. Okay? You'll let me know. Sure. You know what I like about him? He ain't going to bullshit me. He's going to tell me straight up. <laughs> I like that. You want me to go Tupac? <laughs> I'll go Tupac. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm West Side, baby. You want me to go West Side? I go, I go West Side. I'll go West Side for sure. All right, we're all good there. Um, questions so far? Does that make sense, Dad? Man, I'm trying not to cry over here. I can't believe that's all that's going on with my boy. There's a few things, and you know, I mean, he's had a lot of fights. Um, did the fights cause it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was just life. Who knows? But I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's taking some hits. Um, Costas, I'm going to do a shout out to Costas, he's our boxer from Greece, and we have a few videos up with him. You got any advice for this kid, so you know, getting back into it, because I'm going to dial him in. Leave us a comment, Costas. Yeah, and he watches. Yeah, we just watched his video when you told us about it, yeah, he, that was, that was nice. He's a good guy. All the way from Greece. All the way, him and his nice. girl came from Greece, absolutely. All right, you ready to get started, guys? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's go over it. Next, let's go over his walk. And what we want to see are those dimples when he walks. You can come on back here and check it out. Go ahead and walk to the corner of the room and back a few times. Now, this is his normal walk, correct? Yeah. So he doesn't really have a smooth gait when he walks. Keep walking. I'm just I'm going over stuff. Kind of goes side to side. You see the spine is kind of choppy when he walks. And he kind of swings the leg. The left leg is short. He's swinging that right leg. He's doing this with that right leg. And the left leg being a little bit on the lower side, he's then pronating and compensating that left, that left foot. Okay? And this is a good, this is a good example of his walk so we can compare down the road, okay? Keep going one more time, please. 
look straight ahead and keep that head up. I know you're supposed to keep that head down though, right? <laughs> Have a seat. Starting at the base of the neck, look up a tiny bit right there. Starting at the base. And boxing pretty big, huh, for amateur boxing? Amateur oh, boxing yeah. is pretty big, yeah? Yeah, that's where it all starts. Right on. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we're getting, six, seven points. Nope, looked like it was. Goes up, goes up, and it breaks at the upper cervical right side. Let's try that again. So we're looking for the break. If I stop, you can see it didn't stop. It keeps going, right? Actually, it keeps going, keeps going, and it's hiding out up top left. So that's a no-no. A lot of compensation going on in this guy's spine. Starting at the base, going down, 10 points. Looks like, nope. Interesting. He may have cord pressure coming from the thoracic spine, guys. And you can have cord pressure. I talk a lot about critical atlas cord pressure or atlas cord pressure. But we can also get it in the thoracic upper lumbars. Anyone who knows the cord enlargements, they're free to leave us a comment. You see how it goes all the way down that left side from the mid-back. Interesting. He's got cord pressure. Sit up straight. Yeah, man, he's got cord pressure down low. Now, I just want to test something out. Check this out. We're going to do this again. I'm going to run it a few times. He's never been adjusted, correct? Never. All right. So we're up top left. Let's run that again. Now that the meter's getting warmed up. Yeah, he's got cord pressure. So what cord pressure is, I'm going to explain to you, okay? And to all you guys out there. Yeah, he's got cord pressure up top. So cord pressure, when there's upper cervical misalignment with rotation, put your fingers in there, two, three fingers. That represents the spinal cord. When it, your fingers, your fingers are representing the spinal cord, okay? And you got them in there? Yeah. Okay, so there you go. When we have rotation of the atlas or even the, mainly atlas, axis can do it, but not really, or the occiput, the rotation, you see what it's doing to your finger. What's it doing? Squeezing it. Squeezing it. That's the cord pressure. So what I need to do in his case, I need to figure out the upper cervical, adjust him, let him walk, and then recheck everything. Mm -hmm. Because that needle is sticking the left side all the way down, it's blocking all our messages. So I can't see whatever else is going on here. So first things first, let's get to this top. So sit back for me, please. How's a little monkey wrench? He does. Head down. Six, five, four, three, two. Bend left, bend right. You crack your own neck? No. Good. Okay, that's one. One on the right. That's one on the left. It's hiding. You feel that right there? Look at the right. The right moves. The left doesn't. Watch his face now. When I go to the right, that moves. When I go to the left, it doesn't. Okay. Turn to your head to the left. Sit down. Turn to the right. Look up. This is isolating the lower cervical. He's tight in there. That side's okay. Look down. That's okay. All right. Let me set that left atlas. Get the pressure off first. Now, that C2 is wedged a little bit, but I'm not getting anything on C2. And because of the angle of his atlas, we're just going to drop that my elbow down quite a bit. Let's do this. Let's use the strap. Left ear down. 
That's the home run. Deep breath in, brother. And down. Get out. Get out. In the front. Look in the front first. His eyes probably not twitching now. That's way better. Better, right? Walk to the corner of the room and back, and let's retest you. And actually, just from that, tell me how those calves feel. Any different? Well, it's hard to tell right now. Okay. Walk on your toes. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You know Muhammad Ali who used to live here before he passed. Really? Yeah, he was here in Hancock Park. We're, we're right next door to the wild card gym right now. That was pretty cool, the hotel we got. Right next to Freddie Roach. There you go. Regular walking. Regular walking. Regular walking. Just walk regular walking. Normal time. walking. Dad, why don't you watch his walk and tell me if you see anything different? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see a big difference. It's a little right. different, right? Before, he, he always walked like five minutes. Have a seat. Let's rescope and check the rest out. Continue. Who was that guy? Pa Pacquai? Pacquiao. 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 He's in that book too, Mastery by Robert Greene. You learn his story. But Pacquiao made Freddie Roach a better coach. Yeah. It was, it was his style. He brought in the sparring, right? Yeah. Because before then, they, I don't think boxers were sparring. Oh, uh, practice. The, the, the pad work. Yeah. The, pad, the yeah. pad work, right? Yeah, Freddie Roach did a great job with him. Yeah. Those are two living legends right there. Now you can see a little bit of a break right there. That's around T10. 12 points, and that's where the blemish is on the spine. Now let's see what's going on down low. Now I can get a break. S5, coccyx, and T10. All right. Let's go ahead and check movement of his pelvis. Scoot forward a tiny bit. Feet together, sit up straight, a little straighter for me. Open and close your knees with your feet touching. Open and close, open and close, open and close. Right side only. Open and close the right knee only. When he does the right, the left pelvis wants to shift with it. Fixation, left side only. Keep going. When he does the left, open a little wider, open and close. Interesting. This is actually left pelvis, that PIX we're going to have to deal with. Okay, sit back for me a little bit. Scoot back, sorry, scoot back. There you go. L5, S1, tender. S2, more tender. S3, you need to speak up, dude. S3, I hope you don't hit like you speak. <laughs> Come on, L5. S1, tender. S2, more tender is what I feel, yes? Yeah. S3, yes? Yeah. S4, that's even more. And let's go down one more low, low, S5. Yes? Yeah. S5. Now, I'm going to be on the underwear. On the, I'll be on the outside, actually. Let's look at the coccyx, as we said. Coccyx on the right, coccyx on the left. You feel it more on the right here when I push, or the left? Right. Right side. Right coccyx, coccyx to S5. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, T nine. Tender at nine. Look at his face now. T nine or T yeah. ten. Yeah. That's nine. That's ten. Nine. Yeah, nine is a little more. You like spice? <laughs> We're Mexican. We love right. spice. Well you're gonna be little, you're gonna get a little habanero today, dude. <laughs> Let's see what I got. <laughs> All right. 
Now, let's go on your back here. Let me check out your ankles and your knees and your feet. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm just checking motion of his knees. I'm checking what's called patellar tracking. Patellar tracking. We have the, we have the, why don't you come in here a little closer. We have the femur, we have the tibia, we have the patella that sits right in there. Hold there, please. So we're checking patellar tracking first, and then we're checking what's called valgus varus stress. This is the right knee model. So if you can look from here, you can see there's the patella, there's the groove that it sits in. When we have optimal alignment, everything is nice and smooth. If we have misalignment of the femur, we have gapping of the inside when we do valgus varus stress. If it's a tibia, if there's a tibia issue, it rotates posterior, we get gapping on the outside. Okay? So we're gonna do tracking and gapping. I know. What is it called? What did they tell you? you had, they told them they had a little, what was it called? Baker cyst. Yes. Yeah. Did you see that? Okay. Baker cyst is just a, it's a normal variant, according to the books. Right in there. Yeah, that's tender. Okay, let's check tracking. Let me do the work. So he has a little clicking at the end. If I do a valgus stress, little clicking. Varus stress, more clicking. Come out, let's do gapping. Come on over so you can see the gapping from here. Gapping, we're holding the full extension. Come up a little bit out of full extension. Going out, medial to lateral, lateral to medial. That's a tibia issue. That's a tibia issue. Let's check the opposite side now. Raise your right leg, please. Tracking two, three, four fingers on the inferior aspect or the medial aspect of the patella and flex and extend the hip. I'm still being professional. <laughs> this side's not as bad. This side's actually a little bit better. Relax the leg. How long will they moan me? Tender on both sides. Opens and gaps on the outside. Right there. So bilateral tibias. Slide down a tiny bit. Slide down a tiny bit. Next we're looking at his, look at the way his feet just rest. Look. So you can see this one kind of does what? Supinates, right? It opens up. This one turns in. Now, we can see there's a little more swelling here. You want to take these off? Tender on there? Yeah. Tender on there? Yeah. You want to check him out? You got to get some... Get some. Now he's going to be all, you know, professional. <laughs> Why are you being all professional now? Tender there? Yeah. You got to catch him, dude. He's quit. There you go. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is dorsiflexion. Heels are lined up right now. Bring the toes back as far as you can. The one that doesn't go back the furthest is the one we work on. This one goes back. This is right side we're going to work on. We're going to work on right ankle, right foot today. We're going to work on the foundation. We'll see if T10 shows up after the tailbone adjustment. Okay? Stand up or sit up. Game plan. Alrighty. It's a lot of info, huh? Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. I'm excited. So, we're going to do coccyx to S5. Um, after that, I'm going to have you walk. I'm going to retest. Everything good there? Then we're going to work on the right ankle. Okay. After we're done there, then we'll get to the top. Okay? And the way I'm going to set the coccyx, give me a second here. I'm going to roll you towards me. It may feel like you're going to fall. I got you the whole way. I need you to not contract. Just let it roll. If I drop you, I send you in debt to Hawaii on me, on record. <laughs> All right? I'll be on your underwear. Let me down low. Right there. There it is. I know. Just relax. I, know. I mean, I'm in, I'm in this coccyx. Dude. I, I get it. I get it. Nice and easy. They don't teach you in boxing school. Easy.
got you. Come on up. Walk it off. Walk it off. Tell me what's different right now. Anything different yet? If I can have a little bit more of an hour of my leg. Okay. Let's go left side down, please. Let's get that S5 now. Left side down. Let's get a little more, a little more off. Bottom leg straight, top leg bent, just like that. Same, same. Hold the wrist. There, right there. Bring that forward. There you go. Straighten that out. Good. Down low. Let me get a little more. Let it roll. Let it relax. Let it relax. Gotcha. That's the rest. Walk it off, please. Good. Nice. Nice. Keep going. Just keep going. And now we're going to go face down over here, please. Hands on the sides of his ankles, just your fingertips, just your fingertips, mm. just like that. That's it. Okay. Okay. I'm on the right rotated. We're going to torque that up that way. Slide up a little more, please. There you go. Relax the shoulders. And we're going to torque. It's a little bit. There you go. T9. Last little bit, of course it's non-textbook, I'm on your left glute, I'm folding the right side, pushing that up, that's it, gotcha, check it out. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to work on his right ankle, and what I'm doing is I'm working out the scar tissue and the swelling. Use a little bit of lotion anytime we injure our ankles or have an inversion sprain, that's one of the issues. And he'll tell you right now, it's as much as you can handle. If it's really too much, you tell me to stop. You don't have to man through it, so to speak, okay? But we got to get as much as we can. Oh, you got to man through it. You gotta, you gotta, he, he tolerates pain well. I mean, your dad, of course, he's like, nah, I'm just kidding, dude, I'm kidding. Yes, so right now I'm working what's called a periarticular swelling. It's the swelling on the outside of the joint. And we're working it through back in to equalize the pressure. Good. Good. Papa, come over here. You're going to help me on this side. I'm just showing you what I'm doing here. And there's a little nub right there. That's, that's you can see his face. That little nub. And that's the nub I got to work out again as much as you can, brother. Get a nice good set on this. Float like a butterfly. Five, four, three, two, one. Next we're working what's called interarticular swelling. And that's the swelling. We're re-establishing the joint pressure. Relax the foot. I'm just going up and down. Okay? 
I'm going dorsi flex with a little bit of A to P on the dome of the talus. There you go. You can deal with that, right? Cool. Now, what we're going to do when I set it, then, is you're going to hold on here facing me like this, okay. but your thumbs are going to go that way. Okay? So come over here. You're going to hold like that, firm. Don't compress, just hold it. And then when I ask you to lift with me, you're going to lift his leg up. So okay. lift. Okay, slow it down. Let's try that again. Okay. Slowly lift up, just like that when I ask okay. you. Okay, gotcha. All right? Four. Three. Two. Oh, yeah. What are you saying now? I'm professional. <laughs> oh. Professional. There you go. Let me get a little tissue for you for the adjustment. Cool. flex and bring it this way. Slowly lift it up. That's the home run, baby. Nice. Look at that. But, uh, <laughs> that's it. Dr. Tupac. <laughs> What's that? Dr. Tupac. <laughs> Actually, they used to call me I'm a cross between Deepak and Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> you know Deepak. Okay, check it out. Walk it out. There you go. That's where we're going to start on all that. As you're walking, Leo, tell us what's different now. Doesn't matter good or bad, just different. I feel like I'm able to lean better with my right foot. I can I control where I'm going more with my right foot. Walk on your toes, see how that feels. There you go. A little different. Walk on your heels. Regular walking, please. One more time. Have a seat over here. Let's continue. Sit, sit. No, oh, sit. Scoot back. Couple commands. Shoulders. Let's just set your shoulders. Get everything dialed in. Drop it down. Down. That's it. Don't help. Externally rotate. That's it. Ears. <laughs> You ready for the nose job? So his nose is a little cricket? Yeah, well, check it out. Come over here on the x-ray, I'll show you. Though. See that bend? Oh, yeah. Right there. This is the left side. So we're going to set it left to right. Get some more oxygen in. Come over here on your back. Chin down, down. Just a bit. Gotcha. Breathe in. And out. In. Ding, 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 Time. Now you get the buff and polish. Got <laughs> the buff and polish. Let's go. <laughs> Have a seat. He was a little skeptical right in the beginning. Yeah, he was. And that's good. You don't have to believe this ain't religion. Yeah. find out in a couple of visits, we're going to see what happens. I mean, the main thing is that he gets power in his calf. Yeah. 
The main thing is that he gets back to training and does what he loves. He wants to be a he wants to be a professional boxer. I'm assuming. Yes, sir. Right. Stand over here, please. Let's check the hands. Turn and face me. Light squeeze like that. Squeeze. A little harder. Relax there. Other hand. Light squeeze. Yeah, this arm is out. I'm gonna do the elbow first over here. Let me have it. Light squeeze. Good. Elbow. We'll save the jaw for tomorrow. Squeeze. Now just one firm squeeze. Squeeze. Good. Squeeze. Still a tiny bit. Scaphoid. There. Squeeze. Squeeze. Questions? Welcome to the office. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, Papa. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'll see you guys.